Hi friends, my previous video on the topic of metaplasia somehow created more questions. I looked at the video again, it's pretty clear there. But let's go and answer all your questions exactly. So the questions that I will answer in this video are, is this early cancer? Could it be reversed? If yes, then how to reverse it? Do I have to take drugs? If I will take supplements, which one I should take and which I should avoid. This video is for people who have metaplasia in different organs because the principle of treatment is going or natural treatment is going to be exactly the same in every single organ. So if person has metaplasia in airways, cervical metaplasia, gastric, esophageal, stomach, urinary bladder metaplasia, this video is for you. In this video, previous video, in part two, I'm going to detail, I have detailed information how to treat it. So please see if needed. Now, the first one, it is not a cancer. And this is the quote from Cleveland Clinic website on the topic of metaplasia. It is not cancer, but it is stepped over it. It's from this article. Okay, it's Right here, it is not a cancer. This quote is mine. It is wake up call for you. It's time to change, to see what precipitated this metaplasia. So people are writing, I Google this topic. It cannot be reversed. I thought, okay, let me do the same. I will go and Google. So I put in the Google search, is metaplasia reversible or irreversible? Here is the answer for you. Metaplasia is defined as potentially reversible change from a fully differentiated cells type to another, which implies adaptation to environmental stimuli. So basically that means that some kind of insult happened to the cells. As a result, one type of the cells gets substituted with another types that are more robust than the previous one. However, I want to bring your attention to this word, environmental stimuli. So this is the stimuli, this is insult, okay? In order to be reversed, you have to identify this stimuli or this is the cause that created this metaplasia. So your whole energy would have to be devoted to identify the cause. Once when you identify the cause, then you can eliminate that. Then the treatment is easier. Right here is the other example of the site from medical uh, British Medical Journal. Is intestinal metaplasia of the stomach reversible? Yes. Example. The answer is yes. I am maybe reversed, although a combination of antioxidant agents and eradication of H. pylori may be necessary to achieve it, because we know that H. pylori create inflammation, and inflammation is uh, contributes to metaplasia or creates the metaplasia. So treat the H. pylori, okay? From the same article, I stole this table, number one. Here on the left, you can see organs where you can, uh, the metaplasia can happen. So airways, cervix, mammary glands, uh, sebaceous uh, skin, esophagus, stomach, and other here on the right, you can see the stimulus that can contribute to that. In case of airways, cigarette smoke. If a person is not smoking, then you have to look for other offensive factors. Person may be uh, working as a, a toll collector. There is a lot of pollution comes at truck drivers, welders, cervix, low pH, and treat HPV. Treat inflammation, esophagus, identify the cause of your acid reflex, deal with the acid because acid reflex is the stimuli for esophageal changes. In case of stomach, high salt intake, low vegetables and fruits intake, low vitamin C, H. pylori and autoimmune agents. Here on the bottom, I added two um, types of metaplasia in the urinary bladder, in, uh, kind of interstitial cystitis, Cystitis cystica and cystitis glandular glandularis. Somehow I had a two people 
suddenly consulting on the topic inter of interstitial cystitis. And um, one of the people cannot quite get idea. Why is that I'm telling him that he needs to stop smoking? He's telling me, how is the smoking? Well, I understand. I smoke, I inhale smoke here. It irritates here. It could be made a pleasure here. But what it has to do with my cystitis? And I say, well, you also have to look if there are any chemicals in the food. So they also may contribute. He's like, well, it's in my digestive tract. Uh, you mean uh, I have cystitis. How the chemicals end up in my urinary bladder? Let's go to the blackboard and I will elaborate more on this topic. My drawing favorite. So here is the mouse. Food will go here. This is the teeth. White is digestive tract. It's a esophagus, stomach, small intestine right here. Large intestine is right here. And we go to the bathroom. In blue is pulmonary system. So this is a trachea and this is the lungs. Green is urinary system. Kidneys, urinary bladder is right here. And we go to the and we go and pee right out of here. So when person is smoking, the smoke with the chemicals come here into the lungs and get absorbed chemicals through the lungs, easily absorbed right into the let's draw bloodstream in red. I want to do to be red. So this is your bloodstream. And the chemicals from the smoke uh, from the smoke get absorbed right into the bloodstream and they, uh, they float here. Chemicals do not belong there. There are two ways to deal with those chemicals. Um, way number one, with the blood flow, those chemicals will go into the liver. Liver is located, located right here, liver. So blood with the chemicals will get delivered here into the liver and liver is the main detox organ. So it will chop, 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 chop the chemicals into smallest particles, into smaller particles. Those smaller particles of the chemicals will get excreted here into the gallbladder and will go from the gallbladder into the digestive tract and they will end up here. Here is the pro uh, here is the problem uh, how it can get back into the blood. So one possibility, those chemicals that get chopped here, they cannot be excreted into the gallbladder. And what happens? They will go back with the blood stream from the liver. I will draw it here. They will go here back into the bloodstream, and will continue floating here. The second possibility. The chemicals, these chemicals that get chopped into smaller particles. These smaller particles is different chemical, but again, is aggressive to our body. And once when it's get into the digestive tract, it can get absorbed again into the bloodstream. And this is new chemical get absorbed and will be circulating in the bloodstream. Now, there is no reason for that. Go back into... um. Uh, into the, the liver. So those chemicals will be floating and eventually will end up here and will go into the kidneys. Kidneys are not going to change those chemicals at all. They will just process them and they will excrete them and they will go with the urine and will stay here. This is the urine and will stay here in the urine, those chemicals until we pee them out. So they may stay here one, two, or three hours, and those chemicals may irritate them. So two ways. Number one, the chemical just uh, cannot be broken by the liver and will be uh, thrown back into the bloodstream, or chemical is broken, excreted into digestive tract, and digestive tract, half broken chemical, will absorb it back, and those will be circulating in the bloodstream and will end up through the kidneys in the urinary bladder. Now, um, that other person also did not understand what it has to do, uh, his interstitial cystitis, that inflammation here in the urinary bladder, do with the food that he eats, because he thought the food has no nothing to do, it just stays in the, the digestive tract, may create inflammation here, and then, you know, will go out. So 
the chemicals that we eat with the food will go here. And like food, will get absorbed through the digestive tract and will be floating here and again could be broken down by the liver or may not and get absorbed back into the bloodstream or broken down and half of this particle will get excreted here and will get absorbed again. So, and as it's floating here in the bloodstream, it will go into the kidneys and will end up in your urinary bladder. Okay. Oops. So again, as you are looking for potential causes of interstitial cystitis, you need to look at different possible causes. Cigarette smoke, food that you eat, and uh, change your diet. Okay, this is the picture. This is how normal cells looks like on basement membrane. Then external stimuli happened. Those cells, normal, get um displaced with metaplastic squamous cells. If insult continues, the totally different cells get re uh, replaced, uh, normal cells are replaced by other types of the cells. Now, do I have to take the drug? There is no drug for metaplasia. What you do, you are look for stimuli, identify that. Supplements, which one to take? Before you take any supplements, Look for the stimuli. Did I say that already three times? If you do not eliminate cause, if you continue smoke and take antioxidant, it's just not going to cut, okay? Stop smoking. Look for chemicals that you eat, okay? So um, supplements, which one to take? So let's, uh, let's say it's HPV. So it's probably a good idea to take supplements that will control HPV. It's, if it's uh, H. pylori, then you take uh, triple therapy or treat it naturally. Look for chemicals that come into your system with, with the air, with the food. Think about skincare products such as sunscreens. Often they are, uh, end up in the bloodstream and will create metaplasia. Types of the food, such as foods are genetically modified. Sometimes dairy will create inflammation, growth hormone. In some people, coffee will uh, have this effect. Artificial sweeteners are chemicals, okay? Think about nutritional deficiencies that may uh, contribute to that metaplasia. Vitamins, minerals, um, low consumption of, feed, of, of fish, uh, low consumption of fruits and vegetables. Supplements to take. In general, big picture, multivitamins and minerals, omega-3, vitamin C, and herbs that will help you to deal if it's bacterial infection or viral infection, so take antibacterial or antiviral herbs. The one supplement this is theoretically contraindicated is L-glutamine because L-glutamine will stimulate growth of all different types of the cells, including the cells that already there, displaced, misplaced, different types of the cells. So you don't want stimulation of the growth. You don't want more of them. So that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much. Like, subscribe. If you have any questions, ask me right here. All re relevant information, uh, articles is in the description below. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.